President Karnakia, members of the administration, distinguished guests, faculty, family, friends, and fellow graduates. We arrived only four years ago on that first day of class with this same look of apprehension, with a touch of hesitation, expectant, excited, and perhaps even afraid of what we did not know, but equally eager to discover it, and all along unaware that in the process we would discover ourselves. You see, we have had the rare privilege at St. Peter's, a Jesuit liberal arts college, to be exposed to something that is greater than our future careers, than our temporal aspirations, than the businesses we will build and the clients we will find. For we were so fortunate that here it did not matter if we were studying to be physicians or teachers. It did not matter if our science of choice was a science of numbers. It did not matter if our goal was to someday open up a small business. We were going to read poetry. We were going to partake of the truth of Shakespeare, the beauty of Michelangelo, and the genius of Kant. We were going to deal with the timeless questions of Socrates because that is what makes us human. And that is all that will ever matter. Here we were made to study the symphonies and operas, the paintings and sculpture, the philosophy and literature of men and women long gone but somehow not forgotten. And this may have seemed at times far from practical as we found ourselves surrounded by a world of gray and steel and concrete. It may have seemed too elevated, perhaps too far removed from the bare reality of life. But at St. Peter's College, Knowledge is its own end. And for this reason, we will not walk away today with just a diploma in our hands or with an education in a specific and limited area of study. Here we were given more than that. We were given the gift of ideas, of words, a gift that is incorruptible, immeasurable, a gift that cannot die. For even before we were born, before St. Peter's College was founded, in the beginning, as it is written in the New Testament, was the Word and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. It is, after all, one of the principal visions of this, our Western civilization, the image of God, the greatest of all poets, creating the world by doing what? By speaking His words. As a student of literature, I've dedicated my life to words, to their creative power, to their sublime capacity to offer, even if only on occasion, a flicker of light in what seems to be an eternity of darkness. That is why we write, paint, play music, do anything that we love, anything that may seem impractical, because we need that light, because we have an impulse that separates us from other living beings, a need inherent to all of us to create, to leave something behind, to live for something other than our next paycheck. Perhaps unlike the great masters that we've studied, what we do in this life may not transcend the limitations of time and place. What we do may not reach people everywhere and always, or be taught in our schools long after we're gone. But we should not aspire to this. We should not strive to be memorialized with statues or recorded in history books. We should strive rather to act justly, to love completely, to live true to ourselves before God and before man. And for that we will be remembered, perhaps not by the world, but by our world, by those who call us friends by those who call us their brothers and their sisters, their sons and daughters, by those who will call us father and mother, husband and wife. Ultimately, my fellow graduates, all of our lives exist in a particular moment in time. We cannot escape that. Regardless of how much money we make or how many books we publish, we cannot overcome this mortality. But we are all required to create because we are alive now and we will never be here again. We are required to create not for empty fame or glory, but because ever since God spoke those first words, the act of creation has been divine. The act of creation is the only way I can imagine us spending the only important thing we have, time. Over the past four years of our short time on this earth, we have made the transition from adolescence to what I see before me now, a multitude of men and women. The St. Peter's has called us to be even more than that, even more than what we are for it is the vocation of the recipients of a Jesuit education to become men and women for others. And so if there's anything we must achieve, if there's anything we can create, let our lives be the instruments of that creation so that we may be finally richer, more alive, more complete human beings above anything else. We must take our lives and transform them, reform them so that we live beyond ourselves, so that we exist for more than what is right before us. 
That is our challenge. That is our high calling. Let's go out from this place and be remembered, not for our achievements, but for the fullness of our love, the truth of our words, the beauty of the lives we have created. Thank you and congratulations.